going on guys? I'm picking up just um, right where we left off in the last video. Um, right now, what I have done, I have the knuckles put together with the ball joints and only the passenger side has the, the speed sensor. And I put the dust shield back on. I broke one of the bolts here, so I only have two of them in, which is fine. But the, um, the ABS sensors that did come in right now, they're wrong, I think. I ordered a set of four of them, and they're all wrong. But I think it's because it's they're for the rear. So this one, I won't have one in the front on the driver's side yet. But um, I also lost all the screws for this dust shield, so I can't really put that on yet. Um, I haven't gotten to go get the tool for the tie rod so I can put the other ones in. But um, I could do all this, control arm, tie rod, axles, and then weights on the knuckles until I have the hubs, so I have the hubs in. But yeah, the dust shield, I guess, just won't go on on this side. Um, I'm gonna order me another speed sensor for this side so I have it. Um, and then, oh, also, I already drilled it. Because on these, you have to drill the little hole up on here, underneath. Um, so that the bag goes in through here, or this goes in through there. If I can show you right there. And then this bolt with the washer come in through the bottom right here and hold it in place. Now, another issue that I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have to order the rear shocks again. Well, not again, but like I got the car like this. But anyways, they don't have the plate right here so that the um, the bump stop stops right there like on the sock one does. Unless I can put like a washer or something right here to run these. But I mean, I don't see, cause let me see, I have one already put together here with the race land. Let's see how far down it goes. Makes no sense, but I'll see what I can figure out. If not, I'll just put the sock ones back in with the bags. It shouldn't be too much of a difference. The sock ones are, are a little bit longer. If, uh, let me see. The body itself is uh, about an inch, inch and a half longer than the Raceland one. So I would like to get the Raceland's one on. But we'll see what we can do about that. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm moving along nicely. And I don't know if I showed y'all yesterday, but I got the hole cut out here now. Now I'll just need to get a plate welded in. This um, hanger for the exhaust is gonna have to get, come down and get relocated. But um, now I have the hole here. I can get a patch pan welded in and then I'll put the pancake tan tank in here, the compressors and the amp maybe as well. This is the stuff that goes in here on the sides so long to spare. What I'm probably gonna end up doing is measuring the height, length and width of the whole, you know, the whole styrofoam and making it a, a wooden box so that that way I can maybe even put like a little the whole trunk make it like a, a door and then so I can access the stuff down here and then I can put the amp and everything down here and keep it hidden and then that big ass box is what's taking up all my space so that's why I really wanted to keep it all in one spot which this will be perfect um, but yeah guys we're moving along and if I only had all the parts I needed, I would be able to get it all that put together. But we'll see what we can do in this little bit of time that I have until the rest of the parts come in. Good morning, y'all. So last night, we got a new fuel pump for this thing. Put it in, wired it up. Um, she started for about three seconds, turned off, and that was it. Didn't want to turn over it again. Uh, on these old... 5.7 vortex the uh distributor the cap rotor and the full distributor itself are really finicky are real common to fail to failure um all this was replaced back when i worked at firestone i paid about 500 bucks to get the distributor cap rotor plugs and wires put on by one of the techs there so this stuff's still under warranty i got about a month until um warranty's over so i'm debating if i should at least just put the fender liners on 
greater support and maybe get it towed over there and have them replace that stuff. I'm still gonna have to pay the 100 bucks for that diagnostic, but I mean, it's better than having to pay about $300, $400 again for stuff that I've already replaced. So I'm debating if I should just do that, maybe get it towed or pull it over there to a Firestone, have them replace that stuff, get her started, get her going, and then maybe just put her back together for the meantime. But um, yeah guys, today I'm going to jack up the GLI, the white car. And uh, right now she's a little bit covered up, but that white car right there. Um, and mess with the linkage because right now I don't have first, I don't have second or fourth reverse and first are kind of tricky. So um, I can get up under there, uh, loosen up the linkage, uh, lock her in with the tool inside the cab and tie her back up and then see if she wants to maybe go into gear right and go from there. And then if this one is fixed, then I'll check her fluids and stuff. And it needs a battery still, but um, that's the kind of the least of my problems right now. Um, park her up front and then start working on everything else. Um, I might not park her up front, maybe at the bottom of the property, but yeah, we got a lot to do today. And not a lot of time, so let's start. So we're working on the GTI. And I hear a truck pull up. It's FedEx. Uh, not completely sure what it is. I picked it up and it seems kind of on the heavier side. It's kind of a small box, so maybe, maybe, maybe. There are the hubs for the car. They are. Last thing I need for the front. It looks like it's the hub. Come on, baby. I got the uh, white car going right now with the test drive in. She goes in all gears, second little rough but found out that I don't have the little grommet for the side to side so that might be why so I'm gonna go in all close and see yep it's the hubs to see if uh, I left the other one from the 2.0 there but so I'm gonna run to the uh, post office real quick but before I do that, I'm just going to show you guys how they go mounted. This is the knuckle here, of course. Slip over. And you've got the biggest ones on top. Like so. You should just slide in. But... That's it, and um, he's, you got these four M14, M12 actually, screws that go into the back. And then just one more check, just for the sake of it. I wanna make sure that it goes through the axle. And it does, bingo. All right, perfect. So when I come back, we'll put these together. All right, guys, so we haven't, I haven't picked up the phone in a while, but I'm pleased to announce that the passenger side, at least, got the bag, control arm, inner and outer tie rod, brakes, rotors and pads, axles are in on this side. We, oh, and the hubs as well. So we got the control arms, the bag, uh, axle, in and outer tie rod. I'm about to put the brakes on this side. And then all we'll have left is the sway bar links. And then I can move to the back. The back's pretty easy. Just one bolt, one or two bolts. 
then run the lines home stretch pretty much.